Okay, so here we have a John Deere 6220 two-wheel drive tractor. That's what we normally run our balers with. As you'll notice, this is tractor number three located in the upper corner of the window. As we come around the back, kind of do a general walk around, look at tire pressures. These are the hydraulic outlets here, power outlet. The hitch and power takeoff, which is a 540. So we come around here, just kind of do a general walk around of the tractor. And everything looks good, so now we'll take a trip inside. Okay, so on your way in, you'll notice the diesel fuel tank is here. And uh, we'll climb on in. Get up in the cab here and sit down. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is adjust the steering system. So you pull this handle here, that brings the tilt down on the steering wheel. And then you're going to uh, take a look down here. Here's your ignition switch. You will turn that. That will fire the tractor up. And then you can uh, start checking your gauges. Make sure uh, you get a full tank of fuel. Uh, this is your speedometer tachometer and your temperature gauge is down here behind the easy steer bracket um, over here you will see your hazard lights flip them on you should come on up here and here you can flip them off or you can go the first switch there will put the headlights on and the hazard lights on if it's getting late and we're coming back uh, another switch for both driving and headlights full on this is a turn signal, left, right, uh, and so then over on this side we have, this tractor is equipped with two sets of hydraulic outlets, one inner side, outer, this is a power takeoff, uh, you pull this up and turn to engage, um, as you'll notice this is number tractor number three and that is also going to correspond to the baler number right there which is also going to be a number three they all have to match um, and then your iPod, iPad once that fires up that'll say baler number three also um, and that's important for data purposes so you get over here this is your three point uh, hitch setup, two point hitch arms. Uh, you should not need that. They should be in the up position. And then over here we have the throttle. Uh, that's a power shift bump. Uh, does the same thing as the two two buttons up here. And then this is uh, right now it's in park. Neutral. A, B, C, and D. Uh, a is the slowest. D is the fastest. And then um, in here you have a one through four. Whether you're in A1 two, three, four, um, and that's going to show up right here in the center. And so you can bump that to three, two, or one. Um, so in order to get this thing to move, you're going to push the clutch in down there, put on the brake, we'll put this in A for test purposes, it's in A1. Go to let the clutch out and before you let the clutch out you have to put the forward reverser lever in forward. Once that's in, let the clutch out and off you go. The power shift, which is this button, you can just bump. You don't need the clutch for that. You can go to two, three, or four. If you want to stop, push the clutch in, brakes on. Flip this into reverse, let the clutch out, and you will start to back up. When you decide you want to stop and get out of the tractor, or just stop in general, and you put this in park here, you will get a warning light if you do not have this in neutral. Make sure that's in neutral. 
everything's happy when you're done um, and you've been running a while and the temperature gauge is up and normal operating temperature um, it's really good to let the tractor uh, cool down you can have the idle up slightly uh, just to keep all, everything circulating through and then uh, when you're all finished everything's cooled off you can throttle it down and then turn the key off uh, that's about it in here okay so now we're gonna hook up to the baler which is located directly behind us and we're gonna want to do that in A that's a nice slow gear so no one gets run over A1 is preferred so you drop that in put that in reverse and let's turn around so when backing up it helps to open the window which is right here and you're gonna to want to look out and down at the hitch and line the holes up Once you get them lined up, go back to the park, that in neutral. Okay, now this is the hitch pin. So you pull the hairpin out, stick that in there. Down you go, hairpin goes back in the hole. There, that's now hooked. Next, you're going to want to hook up the power takeoff. This has a slip collar on it, so you pull that back as you slide it on so it locks in this notch here. Once that is uh, on and forward, uh, it should not come off under any circumstances. Should hear it click, and you're good to go. Next is uh, your hydraulic hoses. Pop them out. They always go with the, uh, the bolt facing in. This one will be on the top, this one will be on the bottom, on the left hand side. And uh, this is for your pickup head. This is going to be on the right hand side. And uh, hook that up. This comes down, slides in, and clips in there. Once you've got that done, then you're gonna to wanna to, um, You're also gonna to wanna to look and make sure there's no dirt on the fittings. If there is, just take a rag, get them cleaned off. And then these go in and just push in. After you get the uh, the tractor hooked up, it's very important that you lower the jack stand. Pull the pin, turn it sideways. And put that back in. 
Okay, so now we'll start to do a walk around on the baler itself. Uh, this is the drive line coming back into your flywheel. Um, on the flywheel is a shear bolt. It's located right there. So if you need to change that, that's located here. Slide that in, put a new nut on, good to go. Open the hood. In here we have the plunger. Come around to the side, we have the feeder fork. There is three positions on the feeder fork. You only need to change that if you're asked. Along the side here, here's another shear bolt uh, for the nodders. And then we lift open the hood for the nodders. In here, are the two nodders, um, grease fittings pointed out here, there, there. Um, you want to make sure none of the springs are broken. Inspect thoroughly. This is our trip arm. It's been slightly modified. Um, this is uh, an electric trip or mechanical depending on how we have it set that day. Um, and then we go back to the uh, airbag that adjusts the tension on the bale chamber to uh, adjust the density on the bales. Um, the reserve tank is at the bottom. The needles are right here. Uh, that's a sensor to tell if the need needles are in home position, which they are right now. Uh, it goes through. The twine is threaded and everything looks pretty good under here. On the back of the baler, this is the PLC. Uh, when running, this light should not be on. If you start to see this come on, then we have a server problem and that needs to be addressed. Uh, around the back is the quarter turn. Uh, here is the switch for when the bale drops down onto the scale platform and the measuring arms. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the battery box. Good to have that blown out every day at the end of the day. Uh, this is the uh, metering uh, sprocket that we determine the bale length with also and a proximity sensor put in there. Um, these switches here on the lower half you do not need to touch. On the upper, most of the time it will be in auto. It comes on uh, with the key. Uh, otherwise it would be in off and unless suggested uh, then it would go into on position but most of the time that runs in auto. Um, also on the air compressor we've included a uh, air gun so you can blow the nodders out, blow everything off at the end of the day. It goes in there. This is the switch, this is an auto that turns it off. We leave it on auto unless asked otherwise. Coming around the back here, um, this is a twine box. You want to make sure that's full before you go out. Um, as you will notice, it was on the front of the baler right next to the number three. Uh, determines what color twine goes in the baler. Uh, we run six balers and six different color combinations, but uh, that's pretty straightforward right through there. Um, this is our preservative applicator. Some we run acid, some we run hay guard. They're specified. Uh, please do not mix that up if you're filling them. Pump comes around. Juice is put through here. Um, goes across through the center bar and you have your three nozzles right here. You have the yellow, orange, and black. Um, they should all be functioning properly and uh, we'll address that later on. This is the, the pickup of the baler. Uh, we also have a sensor here so we know when hay is going in. That turns our juice on and off along with our moisture sensor. Um, we also have a sensor on the plunger to determine when it's all the way back. Uh, up here, um, we safety wired the pin out so that um, 
no string has to be pulled and that's purely on hydraulic that'll run you want to run it all the way over to the stop which is here and you should be in good position uh, for field mode now at the end of the day for clean out purposes you want to open these flip this up uh, and you want to make sure all the hay is out of this area here and everything looks good and clean as you will notice we installed a secondary toolbox that's on top here should have all the wrenches you need and uh, these are some of the shear bolts if you so happen to need one that goes in the flywheel or the nodders if for some reason you have to flip the nodders up to access some stuff and clean the bill hook off uh, you're gonna remove this hairpin here pop this pin out take these two Put them up on that tray so you don't drop them in the field. You can pull up on this. And now you're pretty good to go. Um, you can look at all the major parts. Sometimes you get some twine wrap down here. Uh, the wiper arm doesn't always clean it off, but it should. Um, twine disc, so on and so forth. Tucker fingers. It's all in there. Just bring that back down, pin in, pin in, should be good to go. Close the hood. Okay, so if you come back and uh, you look here, we have twine on this side and no twine on this side. So chances are we had a malfunction in the field and uh, there's no twine up in the twine disc holder. So if we look around, we're going to see we have twine on the ground, which is never a good thing. So if for some reason it, no one tied it together, you'd have to re-thread it up through here, out through here. Through this hole. Through this hole. And you're gonna reach through, uh, bring it up through here, like that. And you're gonna want to stick it. And that hole there. Bring it back. And then you're going to want to tie it off. So once you get it run through there, through there, just tie it off here and it should be good to go.